Hi, this is Dr. Nick. I'm the Incrementalist here with Incremental Insights for Better Business, Better Health. And I'm Fred Goldstein with Accountable Health here working with employers on their employee benefits, both with COVID and issues beyond COVID. So Nick, one of the things that came out this last week that we discussed previously, but now we've got some new guidance from the CDC. It's new guidance. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> the new stuff, which, which essentially begins to recognize airborne transmission of the virus and talks about the six foot or beyond saying it's uncommon beyond six feet, but it is something that needs to be considered and people can become infected when they go into a space, even if the person who was infected has left. And this sort of recalls what you and I talked about way back a year ago when we found that first study, I think the study was May 22nd, original news about it, on a January infection at a Chinese restaurant where the airflow between the tables caused a spread across these multiple tables where people were more than six feet apart. But at that time, you could see the arguments going on. And I read a lot of the historical comments about this, but it really is something to consider but your thoughts, Nick, and does it really change how we should look at what we're doing? Well, it, it's created a lot of consternation throughout the, the whole period of time. And, you know, you're right, looking back on history, uh, it, it's a struggle for people because it was a change and there was this resistance. It took a group of scientists to essentially sign a letter and say, no, you have to consider this as an airborne. I think maybe there was a little bit of resistance because we were all thinking about the, uh, uh, the movie with the uh, airborne uh, you know, transmission. And we just didn't want to accept that as uh, a reality. Um, but I think the data was clear. And as you look back at that study, and I know you went back and looked at it, Fred, the, it, it's very compelling, right? There, there is no other real explanation for this when you look at the distribution. And I think it was concurrent with the South Korean uh, call center where you had elevators and there were other people and they did a really good job of contact tracing detail. And you saw the same distribution that couldn't really be explained any other way. And, and yet here we are a year later and we're finally going, yep, it's airborne. I, I, I'm, I can understand people being frustrated by that. I would say it is airborne and we have to mitigate based on that. And we have to use all of the methodologies and, and we're not doing all of the things that we potentially could. Yeah, and I think as you point out, those mitigation strategies are not different, but when you're indoors, that mask is what the critical areas, especially as they talk about tightly enclosed spaces, maybe less airflow, you know, extended periods of time, wear that mask. You know, obviously we're seeing changes now with the vaccine, which may I hear potentially, I don't know if you've seen this, Nick, where Dr. Fauci has talked about potentially some changes to, inborn, to indoor activities and mask wearing. And, uh, you know, your thoughts on that? Are we beginning to reach that point where potentially it's possible? Well, I, I, I think we've already seen it. Again, the, the guidelines are a little bit um, I was going to say flaky, and that sounds mean, and I don't mean to be mean about it because I think it's difficult, but it says small groups, but doesn't define what small is. We've struggled with this, you know, on a number of fronts trying to advise clients what is a small group, what constitutes a small group, you know, family members, but you can have 10, 15 or more family members, and you might define that as, you know, still small. Um, but as you get people together that are vaccinated, there is this uh, expectation on a number of fronts that we've talked about, which is, first of all, if you've been vaccinated, that means that you're more resistant to developing an infection and certainly uh, developing a severe infection. But I think importantly, you also, we've seen this on a number of studies now, which is really important, you're much less likely to be shedding the virus and actually causing it, even if you've developed the disease, you may not know because you're asymptomatic as we've seen. So I think we're gonna to start to see it. In fact, in my gym, we've already had this conversation amongst us. And I think almost everybody in the classes that I've been going to uh, are all vaccinated at this point. So there's some potential that we could finally take the masks off in. Uh, exercise, which for me, 
uh, would be a great thing because I'm tired of doing waterboarding every time I exercise. Yeah, it's incredible. As I've noticed now in Florida, wearing the masks and it's heated up and it's get you know the humidity. What that mask ultimately becomes after you wear it for an extended period of time because of the liquid, etc. The other interesting point I wanted to make, Nick, in this was that they said two things, two areas to still be concerned about indoors was high intensity activities like at a gym and loud singing. You know, which again points back to the studies we've seen and mentioned. But but over time, as you say, as you get people more and more who are vaccinated, then obviously I think we'll see some changes. We're seeing that with some European travel recommendations now, et cetera. So really another uh, interesting week of, uh, of issues. And these new guidelines, as you said, are a little bit loosey-goosey. We'll see if they begin to tighten them up a little bit. I actually do like your term flaky, by the way. But, and also recognize you were not using that in any denigrative fashion or anything like that. Just a, a, a good little word for it. Hopefully we flake off a little bit more and get a little better understanding as we move forward. So once again, Nick, a fantastic week. Uh, thanks so much. This is Fred Goldstein with Accountable Health. And this is Dr. Nick. I'm the incrementalist here with Incremental Insights for better business, better health.